Hey there, hope you're having a wonderful day. In this video, we're going to go over vectors in C++. So a vector is a dynamic array, and basically a dynamic array is similar to an array, except that it can resize. So with an array, you have to declare the size, and after you declare the size, you cannot change it. But in a vector, you don't need to declare a size, and you can add elements to it, and you can remove elements from it, and the size will change according to the number of elements you have in the vector. So let's start by creating a vector. Since it is a class in C++, you will need to import it. So include vector. And the syntax goes like this. So the vector is part of the standard library, so you need to use the qualifiers, std, colon, colon, vector. Then you need to put the less than sign. You need to write out the type, so in this case, I want an array of integers. Close it with the greater than sign. And you can also refer to these as angle brackets. So you have to put your type inside the angle brackets here. And then you would write out your variable name. So let's say I have an array of ticket numbers. And these could be tickets for anything. It could be tickets for purchases or it could be tickets for customer complaints. So we can have a vector of tickets because if we have a lot of customer complaints or customer purchases, the number of tickets increases. And you can also have a vector of strings. So similar to vectors, strings are part of the standard library. So you have to do std colon colon string like so, okay? But I will be using namespace std. So this will save me some time from typing all of this. So I'm just going to remove this. And generally, it's not ideal to do this if you're working on a big project. But since this is just for teaching, I'm going to skip writing out the std colon colon. I'm going to skip using the qualifiers. All right, so this is how you declare a vector. And unlike other programming languages like Java and Python, variables store the object. And let me actually change this back to int. So here we now have tickets, which is a variable that stores the vector of int. And this is different from Java and Python. So for instance, in Java, the type would be called ArrayList. So you might define it like this. And in Python, it is just called a list. So it would look like this. And so as you can see, in both Java and Python, if you want to create a dynamic array, you would have to write out the variable and then equal, and then you would call the constructor of the class. So in the case of Java, it would be array list with the parentheses. And in the case of Python, you have list with parentheses. That is not the case in C++ because in Java and Python, you're creating variables that point to objects. Whereas in C++, you just create a variable that stores the object. Okay, and in a later video, I will talk about the differences between variables and pointers in C++. And if you're coming from Java, you might think that this is equal to null because I didn't assign it a value. But again, in C++, when you create a variable with a vector, it will automatically create a vector of size zero. Okay, so in C++, variables do not have null or undefined values. So compared to an array, a vector has more functionalities. So for instance, I can do cout tickets.size, and this will give me the number of elements inside tickets. So if I save and run a program, you can see we get zero because all we did was create a vector. We didn't add anything inside the vector. And you can also do cout tickets.size is equal to zero, and this will do a comparison. So if the size is equal to zero, then the vector is empty. So we would need to put this inside parentheses because of order of operations. But luckily in C++, you don't have to write all that out because we have tickets.empty. So this empty function will give us one or true if the vector is empty and zero or false if it's not empty. So let's save and run a program. And you can see the length is zero, and so it is empty, so we get true, true, okay? So we don't need this line here, so I'm just gonna get rid of that. All right, so now that we have our vector, let's add some values to our vector. So to add a value to a vector, you can do tickets.pushback, and then you can push back a value that corresponds to the type that you declare it as. So I can do 1000, which is an int, and I can do tickets.pushback. 2005, 
and tickets that push back. So you can do any number. So maybe I can do 1500. And so now our vector has three values inside it. So pushback will add a value to the end of the vector. So this will be done in order. So let's save and run our program. And you can see the size is now three and we get zero for false because the vector is no longer empty. And if you want to print out the values in your vector, you can do so by accessing the value at each index. So here we know we have three values. So I can do C out tickets of index zero. And then I can just copy and paste this. And then let's change this to one and this one to two. Let's save and run our program. And you can see we get 1000, 2005 and 1500. And alternatively, you can use the at function. So C out tickets dot at zero. And I'm just going to copy and paste this. And let's change this to one and two like so. So if I save and run my program, you can see we get the same values. So these are two ways of doing the same thing. And just like a regular array, I can update the value at each index. So I can do tickets at index zero and I can make this nine, 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 nine. So now if I save and run my program, you can see we've changed the value at index zero to nine, 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 nine. So this is how you would create a vector and add elements to the vector one by one. Now, this is actually inconvenient to do. Instead, just like with arrays, we can initialize our vector with values. So I'm just going to get rid of this. So one way would be to use the constructor so I can just pass in an array inside parentheses. So I can do 1000, 2005, and 1500, like so. And then if I save and run my program, we get these values. And actually, I don't need the parentheses. I can just do it like this, and this will also work. So if I save and run my program, we get these three values in our vector. And this might be more readable to you. So you can do tickets equal, and then you can write out the array like so. So let's save, and then if I run my program, you can see we get the values over here as well. So it's up to you how you want to do it. You can include the assignment operator if you want. There are some small differences in how it constructs and initialize the vector, but you don't have to worry about that because either way, you're going to get the same three values here. So you can do it however you like. Here, I guess I can just leave it as assignment. So it just makes it easier to read. And here we have tickets of zero. You can see zero is the first index, right? So zero would refer to 1000. What if you want to get the last value? So to access this, instead of zero, you would do tickets dot size minus one. So index starts at zero. So if you want to get the nth value, for instance, if you want to get the third value, you would do three minus one. So you do index two. So in this case, the size is three. So you just do size minus one. So three minus one gives you two. So let's save and run our program. And you can see we get 1500, which is the last element. And in C++, you actually don't have to do this. You can just do tickets.back, and this will give you the last element. Likewise, I can do tickets.front. So this gives you the last element, and front gives you the first element. So let's save and run our program. And as you can see, the last element is 1500, and the first element is 1000. Now you might be wondering if it's possible to print out the contents of the vector like so. So if I try this and I run my program, you can see I get an error. So unfortunately, unlike in Java or Python, you cannot print out the contents of the vector like so. So what we would have to do is use a for loop. So I'm going to talk about for loops in the next video, but here I would just give you a brief intro so first thing I'm going to do is just print out the opening bracket. Then I'm going to use a for loop. So I'm going to do for int ticket colon tickets c out ticket. And then I'm going to see out the white space character and then see out the closing bracket and then the end line character. So basically what this is going to do is going to create a local variable called ticket and assign it to each value within the tickets vector. And then it will loop through the vector and print out the value ticket here. So a for loop is something that we can use to execute a block of code over and over again without having to type it all out. So here we have a for loop that will repeat this print statement inside over and over again 
until we have printed all the ticket values in our vector. So let's save and run a program. And you can see we get this nice little representation of our vector. So we got 1000, 2005, and 1500. And I will explain more on for loops in the next video. All right, so let's move on. And earlier I mentioned that you can use the pushback method to add values to the end of the vector. What if you want to add values at any point in the vector? In that case, you would need to use the insert method. So tickets.insert. And this syntax may seem a little strange. Basically, you need to use the iterator. So tickets.begin. And then you need to insert a value. So here I'm going to do 5,000. So what this is going to do is it's going to insert 5,000 at the beginning of the vector. So you can think of this as index zero, okay? So let's save and run my program. And you can see we have 5,000 that is inserted at index zero. And if you want to insert it at index one instead, so over here, then you would just do plus one. If you want to insert it at index two, you do plus two, plus five would be index five, and plus 10 would be index 10, and so on. So here I'm doing plus one, so this would be inserting 5,000 at index one. So as you can see, we've just inserted 5,000 at index one. You can also go backwards. So I can do ticket.end, which is the last index, and then I can do minus one, and let's see where it places 5,000. And so the last index is over here, so it's going to place 5,000 right before it, okay? And if I just do tickets.end, it would just be the last index, so we can expect it to be over here. So let's save and run our program. And you can see 5,000 is at the last index. All right, so now we know how to add elements to the back of the vector or at any position in the vector. How do we delete elements from the vector? Well, we can do tickets.popback. So just like how we use pushback to add elements to the back of the vector, we can do popback to remove an element from the back. So if I save and run my program, and as you can see, when we call popback, we remove 1500, which is at the end of our vector. And if I call it again, then it's going to remove the last two elements. And as you can see, we now have only one value in our vector, and that is 1000. Now, what if I want to remove elements that are not at the back of the vector? Well, I can use the erase method. So I can do tickets.erase. And just like with insert, I need to pass in the iterator. So I would do tickets.begin. And let's save and let's see what this does. Remember, tickets.begin is the start of our vector. So this would be index zero. So I just removed 1000. And I can also add another parameter as an ending range. So I can say tickets.begin plus one, and let's see what happens. So this is from index zero to index one. And as you can see, all it did was remove the first element. So the ending element is not inclusive. So it stops here. So if you want to include index one, you would stop at index two. So let's save and run our program. And as you can see, we remove from index zero, index one, and then we stop at index two. And you can also clear the entire vector if you specify the end iterator. So if we start from beginning to end, this will clear the entire vector. And so as you can see, we have nothing in our vector and the length is zero and it is empty. So if you want to clear your vector, you can do it this way, or you can just use the clear method like so. And this will do the same thing. It will clear the vector. So here you can see we initialize our vector with these three values, and then we called clear on the vector. So now there's nothing. All right, so those are the main methods that we need to know for vectors. And one more thing I want to add is if I change this to a string, and I call this maybe languages, and then I change the value. So let's say English, Spanish, and maybe French. In this case, if I want to print this out using my for loop, I need to change a few things. So the type is no longer int, it is string, and I'm just going to call this language. And then the vector is languages, and then we print language here, and then let's just 
change these two. So now we have a vector of strings, but you can see here, we get the squiggly line and that is telling us that we need to import string. So I'm just going to do include string and now that should be gone. So now let's save and run our program and we get English, Spanish, and French. So I can get the first value like so. So languages of zero. So if I save and run my program, you can see we have English, but what if I add another index here? So let's say index of five. What would this print out? So let's save and run a program. And as you can see, we get S. And that is because languages of zero, so that is zero, at index zero, we have a string English, and then we have index five of that value. So we have zero, one, two, three, four, five. So we print out this S. So if you ever see syntax like this, it's basically saying, get the value at index zero of languages, and with that value, get the value at index five. Okay, so index zero, and then index five. All right, so that's it for this video. And if you found this tutorial helpful, make sure you leave a like. If you have any questions, let me know down below in the comments. Make sure you subscribe to the channel for more C++ tutorials, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.